University just moments away from kickoff. The starting lineups are being introduced right now, and we are diligently copying down what we hear. Again, we were not giving given a starting lineup for uh, Colorado College, so we'll have that for you in a minute. I can tell you, uh, it looks like in goal it will be Jade Odom for Colorado College. She comes in with 360 minutes in goal, a 0.75 goals against average, and an 824 save percentage. So uh, she, is, uh, she is a sophomore out of Colorado Springs, Colorado, and stands 5'10". So... I expect her to be in goal. Their leading scorer is, uh, for Colorado College is uh, Lauren Millay. Uh, she will be starting at forward. She is a senior from Durango, Colorado. She has two goals and two assists on the season. Also uh, at forward, looks like it will be Jackie Hand. She is a 5'6 freshman from Auckland, New Zealand. And uh, also up top will be Clara Richter for Colorado College. Richter comes in. She is a 5'10 senior from Stockholm, Sweden. In the midfield, it looks like it will be Gina Wilt. She will be wearing number 18 tonight. She is a 5'10 sophomore from Frisco, Texas. Also in the midfield will be Madeline Stesny. Stesny is a 5'5 junior from Denver, Colorado. And Johanna Hamblett also in the midfield for Colorado College. And uh, Hamblett comes in uh, at 5'7", she's a junior from Christchurch, New Zealand. On the back line, it'll be Camille Weaver for Colorado College. Weaver is a 5'5 sophomore from Bend, Oregon. Back there also will be uh, Kayla Montoya. Montoya is a 5'6 freshman from uh, Rio Rancho, New Mexico. And uh, Kelly Sullivan. Sullivan will be a 5'5 senior from uh, Sammamish, Washington. So that looks to be the starting lineup for Colorado College and uh, appreciate my broadcast partner uh, Jeff Gibbon getting all that information down while uh, while the lineups were being introduced. Any final thoughts here before we get started, Jeff? Uh, yeah, again, this is a, it, it, for those that follow NCAA athletics and just to echo what G said is that you may not recognize the name Colorado College, but for those of us that follow NCAA women's soccer, you know, uh, Colorado College is, is a known entity. Uh, they're, they're a storied program, um, and they're, they're going to be well coached. They're going to be disciplined. Um, they're going to be organized. Uh, I expect this to be a, a very tough affair. For those of you who are joining us on the SEC Plus Network, welcome. We're glad to have you with us uh, tonight. Once again, I'm David Ellis. Alongside is Jeff Gibbon. And uh, you will be hearing tonight the uh, radio feed that's broadcast on our local station here, uh, The Zone 102.7 FM and RadioAggieland.com. So if it sounds like to you as you watch the game that we're doing a radio, uh, a radio broadcast, that's because we are. So uh, we'll be talking a little more than normal than we normally would on a regular television broadcast because this is, in fact, a simulcast. So welcome aboard. We are glad you are with us tonight. It is, as we mentioned earlier, a beautiful night here in College Station. Had a shower just a little bit ago, but it has uh, gone through the area. Not expecting any more rain tonight. Not a lot of wind uh, tonight either. And uh, two good teams here. Texas A&M ranked fifth in the country and Colorado College uh, coming in at three and one. The Aggies also working on a 21-game unbeaten string here and look to continue that tonight. I want to remind you, if you're in the area here in College Station, plenty of time. Come on out and watch some great soccer tonight. If you have a ticket for the Clemson-Texas A&M football game tomorrow, you can get into this soccer match for free. Uh, and we'd love to have you out here. Again, just a gorgeous night here at Ellis Field. Texas A&M uh, will be wearing the maroon uniforms tonight with the uh, white and maroon horizontal stripes. It will be Colorado College in the all-white uniforms tonight. I mentioned uh, had a brief shower here, Jeff, and that should speed up the field a little bit. This is already a fast field. Really? But it should speed it up, and that kind of plays into the hands, I think, of Texas A&M. Absolutely. It might slicken the ball up a little bit. No worries whatsoever about standing water. This is a world-class surface. Craig Potts and his crew do an amazing job with this facility. But, again, there might still be some uh, some some – some ambient moisture on the grass. So, yeah, it could uh, it cause, cause troubles for the goalkeepers when they expect a little bit of spin and, and the moisture takes the spin out of the ball. 
So again, even more reason for, for Emily Bates and Allie Watt and, and uh, Alistair Hall's daughter to, to take some early looks on goal um, and uh, to see what that ball does. But it's something that Cosette Morche has to be uh, accountable for as well. So we'll see how it goes. Again, this field does, a, the surface does a, an amazing job of, of, of absorbing water um, and, uh, and structurally doing, maintaining its integrity. Um, so I don't think it's gonna, you're gonna see divots of turf being torn up from the players, but it could have an effect on the, uh, on, on the spin or lack thereof of the ball. Texas A&M looks like we'll have the first touch tonight and it will be Emily Bates who will go up to take it. The Aggies will be going right to left here tonight and that is south to north. We mentioned earlier about Colorado College. Get this, they hosted the very first ever National Collegiate Championship for women's soccer. Competing in that, uh, that was in 1980 at Colorado Springs, Colorado, at their home field there on the campus of Colorado College, competing in that game, uh, in that championship, Texas A&M, one of those teams that was competing. The Aggies put it on frame from the very get-go. That was Grace Piper. Yeah, and the, and the, uh, the goalkeeper, uh, uh, Jade Odom, uh, kind of sneaking forward a little bit. She was up near the PK. She really had to backtrack with, uh, to, to uh, get a handle on that ball. Aggies. Try to get control here, and they do. That's Emily Bates, who will send it out wide right side now to Jordan Hill. Up to Zemer, just across the halfway line. To Addie McCain, top of the attacking third. She sends it down, trying to get it to hold his daughter. A little bit too quick for her. She can't run it down, and it will go over the end line and be a goal kick here for Colorado College. I mentioned in that first Women's National Championship held back in 1980, North Carolina, Harvard, Texas A&M, UCLA, Cortland State of New York, Northern Colorado, and Colorado State. So get your uh, pools together. Guess the winner of that tournament. No cheating by going to the internet. And uh, get everybody together doing that. And uh, we'll tell you in a few minutes who actually won that first tournament. Colorado College with the ball. Jackie Hand with it. Gives it away there to Lauren Millay. Going to lift a high ball in. It's going to land on the top netting, and it will be a goal kick for Cosette Morche. And there you see what Lauren Millay has to offer. Again, she is a, uh, again, Colorado College competes in the Mountain West Conference. She was, she's a, a first team selection back in 2017. Six points early on in the season. She, she's, she's proven. She's dangerous. They're going to have to be accountable for her. Jordan Hill approaches the halfway line on the far side and sends a long ball forward. Trying to get it to Allie Watt, back to goal about 25 yards out, deflected, and Colorado College comes up with it. Sends it across the halfway line, but the Aggies will recover the ball there. That's Kendall Ritchie right through the center circle. One touch there by McCain. Nobody there for Texas A&M, and here comes Colorado College again. They're at the top of their attacking third on the far side, trying to slot it in. Right there to uh, Clara Richter. It goes out of bounds, and it will be a throw-in for Colorado College. Top of their attacking third on the far side to our right, it's Lauren Millay who will take the throw-in. She walks it down to about 22 yards now off of the flag on the far side to our right, dumps it in down toward the corner. Tara Zemer gets a foot on it. Recovered by Colorado College. They send it back into the penalty area. Jordan Hill for Texas A&M sends it away and gets it ahead to Allie Watt. She tried to turn and go and uh, was held there. Foul called our first of the evening. It'll be a free kick for Texas A&M. That was just a, a fear of speed right there. Yeah, think, that, was just, that was sheer athleticism. Received with her back to goal, her second touch. She turned the corner, tried to turn and go. There was space to attack, and she got drugged down. The Aggies put the ball back in play quickly. Near side, Allie Watt in the channel. Gives some ground, loses the ball there to Johanna Hamblett. Hamblett and Watt. And it's going to be a foul called on Allie Watt. It'll be a free kick for Colorado College here on the near side, about uh, eight yards out of their penalty area. And taking the free kick will be Camille Weaver. Weaver sends the ball down the middle. Chested down there by Grace Piper, and the Aggies come up with it. Come into Lopez, near side, drops it back to Kendall Ritchie. Still send a square ball to the far side of the field. Jordan Hill sends a 
Sends the ball up across the halfway line. It comes back to her. She has it at her feet. Square ball inside the center circle now to Grace Piper. Diagonal ball out near side. Jimena Lopez tried to cut it in there to hold his daughter. Picked off, deflected by Colorado College. They dump it in their attacking half, but the Aggies get it there. Early on, uh, Jeff, Texas A&M, not a lot of sustained possession, about three or four passes, and then there will be a passing error or a turnover. Uh, well, right when you say that, I like the patience they're showing with their back three. They're not just dumping it forward aimlessly. Exactly. They, they, they worked it out. They worked it back to Morche to maintain possession, and then they just kicked it wide. Amanda Lopez with an early service in, looking for Ali Watt on the back side of the, uh, of the arc, the top of the 18. Here come the Aggies again. Zemer trying to run the ball down on the far side, and she does. I but thought Zemer had her best game of the season against Santa Clara. Yeah, she did. Last Sunday uh, she night. She really did. It was really starting to assert herself on the flank or inside when she's playing in centrally. Zemer, the freshman out of Santa Rosa, California. Aggies with the ball there right at the halfway line, just far side of the circle. It's Bree Alston. She'll switch it to the near side to Jimena Lopez. Lopez battling over there. Here, right here, rather, on the near side with uh, Taylor Wheeler. Now back to Kendall Ritchie and to Bree Alston. She'll send it through the circle to the far side. And this is really good stuff. Yeah, this One really side of the is. field to the other. Minimal Hill touches. to Zemer. Slots it into Watt, corner of the penalty area. Back into the corner to Zemer. She tries to get the cross off and misconnects. So it looks like Colorado College is sitting back defensively in a 4-5-1. They're trying to counter with a 4-3-3. With, uh, with Richter sitting as that target forward. And again, she's a back to goal forward. She is not going to be a running forward. So when they play into her, they're going to look to hold up play, get numbers forward. And again, Malay is going to be involved. She's playing kind of an attacking midfield. She's going to become that second forward if the opportunity presents itself. It'll look more like a 4-4-2. But in transition, it looks like they're going to counter kind of in a jailbreak, 4-3-3, pushing their wingers up. And those two will be their primary running forwards. Again, with, uh, with Richter being that target that target back to goal for that big body who might be able to battle against Bree Alston and hold up the ball. Corner kick for Texas A&M. Sent in just Ooh. over the crossbar. It came from off the foot of Kendall Ritchie, curved in toward the goal, and I believe it went off of the head. It went off the head of, of Hollis daughter, uh, actually. She flicked right. it on, and actually, I just thought... Just over the crossbar. Yeah, I thought Oda might have saved that, but apparently not. That didn't miss by much. Goal kick now for Jade Odom. Ball will come up short of the halfway line as the wind has picked up just a little bit here this evening and Colorado College and Odom are kicking into the wind. Here they come on the attack. Malay lays it down into the corner. Cross comes in right at the inside the six and Richie gets a foot on it for Texas A&M, sends it to the far sideline. Ball kind of stayed in the six just a little bit longer, and I think Texas A&M wanted it to, but nobody there on the end of it as the ball came in from Jackie Hand. Aggies, Watt had a foot on the ball, sends it into the central third, but record, recovered by Colorado College. And just as I say that, there's a turnover, and here come the Aggies. Watt and Hollis daughter up top. Watt. Lays it out near side to Holdest daughter. She's trying to track it down before it crosses the end line. Does. Drops it back to Jimena Lopez. Lopez takes a shot, and it will trickle over the end line right down in the corner and be a corner kick for Texas A&M. And again, uh, I think Hollis daughter kind of held her run a little bit. Allie Watt played space, and I think, I think Alstis wanted the ball at her feet. But again, a good counterattack where... Allie, Allie Watt was able to kind of withdraw herself from their back line a little bit, find a little bit of space to where she was able to turn and, and face and go forward. And again, and we saw that on, on Sunday night. She can either choose to shoot or attack those center backs, but that's it. She, she laid it off to Alstis. Corner kick, short, played out to Kendall Ritchie, who's going to put the ball up. Frank just over the crossbar. That was a Kendall Ritchie special. Right and again, there. from about 35 yards out, second touch, she didn't hesitate to put it on frame. She and is it was so... A, Knuckleball. Absolutely. It was Absolutely. Purely. If that was two inches lower, Odom didn't have a chance at that. All right, but it'll be just, a goal kick. Go ahead. No, no spin, just phenomenal technique, flawless technique. No spin on that ball whatsoever. So it'll be Jade Odom with the goal kick right at the halfway line. Colorado College gets it. That was uh, Jenna Wilt who got a foot on it, dumps it down into the attacking third, but the Aggies track it down there. Zemer ahead to McCain. 
Dribble got away from her, but the Aggies pick up that loose ball, and Jimena Lopez gets it near side of the center circle. She'll drop it away from pressure. Back to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie back into the middle of the field now to Bree Alston. She'll switch it far side. Jordan Hill sends it through the circle, trying to get it to Grace Piper, but it was behind her. Colorado College tried to start the counter. That was Johanna Hamblett sent a long ball forward. Trying to get it to Clara Richter, but they don't connect. It goes out of bounds on the far side. It'll be a throw in for Texas A&M. Top of the defending third, Jordan Hill will come up to take it. Jeff, Texas A&M beginning to assert a little more possession here. Beginning to uh, get into, it seems like to me, into a little bit of a rhythm. Still yeah, the, still not connecting as many passes right, consistently right. as they'd like. Exactly. So the ideas are there. Now it's just a matter of technically executing on those ideas. Uh, but, again, A&M's got to be, gotta, gotta be a little cautious here. Again, the, the Colorado College wants to sit back and numbers behind the ball and, and counter. That's what they want to do. Uh, so not only the numbers being thrown forward, but they – they are in a 1-2, meaning they're playing with one holding and two attacking. AM is playing with one holding. So not only the numbers going forward against AM's back three is, is problematic for AM, but again, they have two attacking mids on Grace Piper, as you can see right here, where Malay gets in behind Grace Piper. Malay lays it out wide, far side to hand, looking for the cross. Low driven ball. Piper gets a foot on it for Texas AM and sends it to the far side. Zemer and hand over there battling for it. Finally, it'll be Emily Bates. Go ahead, Jeff. I'm sorry. No, th that was a, a great example of, of my, my concern right there for Texas A&M is they have two attacking mids that are sitting on either side of Grace Piper. And when they're able to connect with one another, obviously you're in a man-down situation. They can turn and go at Bree Alston. Addie Watt, top of the attacking third. Now in the penalty area. She's going to take a shot and send it high. Just over the stands behind the north goal. And not a bad idea. She created space, a little bit outside push with the right foot, but again, just got underneath the ball right there, sent it harmlessly over the top of the goal. But again, with one of those players being Lauren Millay, uh, again, a, a returning, uh, she was a first team Mountain West selection last year. She's obviously the leading goal scorer. Kind of everything goes through her in transition. And she's one of those players that are in the mold of, uh, of Brady for BYU or Maddie Gonzalez that we saw for Santa Clara. Again, not a, not a lot of scissors and fancy uh, you know, technical creativity. Just simple, sh smaller player, great change of direction, great change of speed. And you know, if she if she has a little bit of space, she can she can turn at Bri Al go at Bri Alston, uh, who is who's kind of dedicated herself to that target forward Richter for Colorado College. So again, not only is it the counterattack and the sheer numbers that Colorado College wants to throw forward on the counterattack, but it is overwhelming Grace Piper with those two attacking mids in the center of the field and how that kind of trickles down and puts pressure on Bree Alston, who is responsible for their, for their target forward, Richter, number 14. Here comes Kendall Ritchie, near side, across the halfway line with it to Jimena Lopez. Lopez will drop it back right at the halfway line to Ritchie. She'll get it with her left foot, send it up, flicked on there. Top of the attacking third by Holdest daughter. She sent it toward the penalty area, but there was nobody there for Texas A&M, and it's picked up by Jade Odom. We've got 32-38 left to play in the first half. No score here at Ellis Field. The Aggies have three shots, and uh, Colorado College has one shot here in the first half. And again, going back to one of my original points in pregame, and we talked about the, this, Dave, is that not only is it important for the outside mids to get forward in transition for Texas A&M, but they've got to make themselves available, maybe drop a little deeper to make themselves available for the outside backs of A&M. Um, because if they're going to be put under this much pressure via Colorado College's counterattack, the moment they get the ball, they've got to have an outlet for their second or third touch. Kendall Ritchie got it to Allie Watt. Rebound comes back to Bates. Now it's Holdest on her top of the to arc. Cuts it just wide of the near post. Great ball there by uh, Actually Austin Holdest saved. Daughter. Saved and it was, Odom. it was. Odom got a fingertip on it and sent it. Or possibly right at the ground. It might have been deflected prior to getting to Odom. We, we don't Could have, have been, but it went over the end line nevertheless, and it'll be a corner kick for Texas A&M. And Addie McCain will take it here from the near side to our left. And this is interesting from Colorado College. No marking, straight zone. So they're defending with, with 11 in a zone situation. They might mark a runner at the PK. Ball comes in, top of the six, headed away there by Colorado College. It'll go out of bounds on the far side of the field. It'll be a throw-in 
for Texas A&M. Jordan Hill will take it quickly for the Aggies. You're right, they had everybody, and I mean everybody, down just about inside the six. Texas A&M has been very good on set pieces this year, and you got to figure that uh, Colorado College has watched some videotape. And again, Colorado College 3-1 and one early on in the year, but uh, two of those wins, they're 2-0 and oh on the road. So, I mean, they, they have a good road record. And again, this is a, this is a storied program. This is not a no-name uh, no school in women's soccer. Ball near side, Kendall Ritchie for Texas A&M. Gets it ahead to McCain. She one touches it to Holdest Daughter. Near side of the, of the penalty area. Holdest Daughter sent the cross in. It comes right back. Deflection near side. And it's going to go out of bounds. And it will be a throw in for Colorado College right in front of their own bench. The ball got rejected out of the top of the six. It was just a line drive back going toward the sideline, and it hit Holdest Daughter. She was trying to get out of the way, just couldn't do it. It'll be a throw-in for Colorado College, about 15 yards short of the halfway line. They'll send it down the line. Nice job there by Jimena Lopez to head it to Grace Piper. And Piper to Hill, who will send the back to the ball back to Cosette Morche, and Morche will swing it near side to Kendall Ritchie. She'll switch the field far side to Jordan Hill. Hill with the ball on the ground now, across the halfway line to Tara Zemer. Zemer pokes it down the sideline to hold his daughter, who will not be able to track it down before it goes over the end line. Again, not a bad idea. Just got to right. properly weigh those balls, got to technically execute on those ideas. And, and uh, I, like, I like how they're not only are they doing a better job breaking pressure using the outside mids, but they've also, you know, five or six times now, just played a simple, well, well played ball, a, re a receivable ball to Cosette Morche, and again, kind of recycled their, their their shape and got themselves back in shape, and then uh, tried to build out of the back again through the feet of Morche. Goal kick comes out into the central third. The Aggies win it there. Holdest daughter square ball near side to Jimena Lopez in space. Top of the attacking third. She'll crank one in. Top of the six. The Aggies get ahead on it. Rebound comes to Bates. Now to Lopez. Lopez will drop it all the way back to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie, she'll swing the ball in. It will be on frame. Holdest daughter comes crashing in. Ball clear there at the 18, or excuse me, at the uh, top of the six where Addie McCain got ahead on it and a great stop by Jade Odom. And Jade Odom got punched that ball out, but she got she hit it underneath the ball, sent it way high. There was not enough trajectory in that ball to clear the first line defense. Allowed Addie McCain just to really got some... Uh, with, with good technique, uh, put it on the ground and, and tried, to, tried to score with her head off of the, the rebound of Jade Odom, but w was unable to. Good save by Jade Odom in, in recovery. It really was by, uh, by Odom. I thought she did an excellent job. because First of all, she got knocked down there in the collision with, uh, I believe it was Allie Watt, had to get up and recover uh, in time to, uh, to be ready for the ball from Addie McCain on the header. Aggies back with it in the attack. Zemer far side into Watt around the first defender. Going down the far side of the penalty area. Stops, I believe, will lose it over the end line. Yes, that's the case. It'll be a goal kick for Colorado College. And, and one thing I noticed the last time Kendall Ritchie had the ball, Dave, is that Colorado College has been watching tape because the moment the ball hit her foot, they sprinted. All four of them sprinted up. They knew she was from a certain distance she's going to try to serve it. So, with, with that being said, uh, you know, Kendall Ritchie's got to be got to be careful about serving it too early of a ball in because uh, Alistus and Allie Watt were both off sides at the point that she was about to drive that ball in. Um, but, again, she's so dangerous with that left foot from anywhere out. If she does see that back line start to advance, maybe she takes a, maybe she takes a chance on goal. Or she just holds the ball, pulls it back, and, and plays it through Bree Alston and, and allows, allows uh, A&M to get their shape again. Grace Piper just in the attacking half sends it wide far side Tara Zemer. Zemer into the penalty area to Addie McCain. Knocks it back out to Zemer. Here comes the cross. Allie Watt about a yard or two off of the end line. Got a head on it. Now it's Grace Piper who just drills one from about 35 yards, and it went just over the crossbar. Yeah, it didn't miss by much. Again, Grace Piper Goodness on her Grace. second touch. Again, scored two goals against uh, Oklahoma. Had a great game against Santa Clara from her holding midfield position. She's playing with a lot of confidence right now. And she was, again, about 35 yards out when she hit that. We've got 26-21 left to play in the first half. No score. Six shots for the Aggies and uh, one for Colorado College here. The Aggies have had 
the uh, run of play here in the first half. Nothing to show for it yet, but they keep uh, keep pecking away at it. Colorado yeah. College with the ball. Go ahead, Jeff. No, again, I think I think AM has figured out how to break down this Colorado College team, and, and I, I think they're they're going to start to assert themselves here. But again, they they know what Colorado College wants to do now. They they want to counter. They want to to play into Richter's feet, get numbers forward. You know, maybe a, a second and third forward, if not a fourth and a fifth forward with their attacking mids, overwhelm Grace Piper in the middle. But then again, they've got to be aware of, of Texas A&M's counter. They can't, uh, they've got to be accountable for man, ball, and space defensively. Far side of the field, ball from Holdest daughter. That's Tara Zemer. She'll drop it back to McCain. Piper now will send it away from pressure to Jordan Hill, and she'll switch the field near side to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie right at the halfway line. Draws some coverage out, sends it back away from pressure to Bree Austin, who will switch it far side to Jordan Hill. Now Hill to Piper inside the center circle. Piper to the near side. The Aggies very patient. Amena Lopez drop it back away from pressure to Kendall Ritchie. That was a little bit of a careless pass there by Ritchie. The Aggies were fortunate to maintain possession. Piper sends a long ball, trying to get it through traffic to Zemer on the far side of the field. It's sent out of bounds by Colorado College. Just as I was about to say, outstanding patience by the Aggies. It kind of looked like they might have lost patience there for just a second. Ball back in. Grace Piper. Square ball to the near side to Kendall Ritchie. She'll lift it in to Allie Watt. Ball inside on the ground in the penalty area. Bates got a foot on it, or McCain did. Ball still inside the D, and it's McCain who wins it. Drops it out to Zemer. Goes away from pressure, back to Jordan Hill, who will send it back into the penalty area at the top of the 18, sent away by Colorado College. Piper gets it, drops it out wide, far side. Rebound goes to Hill. She'll send it back into the center circle and the Aggies. As Colorado College basically just has everybody behind yeah, the ball. Yeah, they're, they're, they're defending with 10. They've got 10 behind the ball. It's just basically like trying to shoot through a picket fence. And uh, here come the Aggies again. Allie Watt cross coming in. Lopez tried to get a foot on it as she came back from the top of the six back toward the penalty spot. They couldn't get a foot on it. And it's cleared away by Colorado College. They'll send it into their attacking half. They've got it on the far side of the field. 4 to Jackie right Hand. now. It exactly is. They'll drop it there to Millay. They'll get a shot off and send it well wide of the far post. And, and, and again, so Grace Piper, the last two or three balls she's played, they've again they've been the right ball. She just hasn't hit it. She just hasn't hit it with the, with the appropriate amount of weight, with the appropriate amount of pace. She's got to strike that a little bit, uh, a little with a little bit, a uh, little bit more strength. Put a little bit more behind it. Uh, again, the ideas are good. They've just got to they've got to execute. Um, but so, again, the outside mids have got to get wide. Again, continue to get wide for AM because not only does that allow AM's back three to break pressure. But it also allows Kendall Ritchie, and as we've seen a couple times, to play a direct ball for the forward. If the, if the outside mid and the center back, or the outside back, the ball side outside back, start cheating towards Jimena Lopez or Terrazima, boom, that opens up that passing lane for a checking Alcis Haldis daughter or Ali Watt that they can play a direct ball in. If they have space, they can turn and go. They can combine with the center mids. Um, they can take a shot from distance, et cetera, et cetera. So, again, the key to breaking down this Colorado College defense is to play quicker, play with the appropriate amount of pace so the ball's not intercepted, and... Again, the play of the outside mids, making nice themselves available. Nice combination there. Hold his daughter. Now McCain, far side of the penalty area. They'll drop it back to Zemer. Zemer sends it away from pressure to Jordan Hill. Now back into the center circle to Bree Alston. She'll switch the field. At that last stoppage, Ray Conlon checked in for Colorado College for uh, Jenna Wilt. Conlon has a goal and assist uh, on the year. So far for Colorado College, she is a senior from Shaker Heights, Ohio. First substitution of the night. 21-50 left to play in the first half. Again, Texas A&M and Colorado College in a scoreless tie here at Ellis Field. College Station, Texas. Glad you're with us. You're watching on the SEC Network. Nice ball to Bates there. Hold his daughter back to Bates. She get, takes a shot with a left foot right at the top of the 18, and it goes off of a Colorado College player and will be a corner kick for Texas A&M. Wanted to mention uh, again the great folks at uh, the Zone 102.7 FM, our broadcast partners throughout the season. Glad uh, 
you're listening there uh, on 102.7 or on, on uh, RadioAggieland.com. Here comes the corner kick in over everybody. Jimena Lopez was the last player here on the near side of the six. It goes over her head and out of bounds. And driven just a little bit deep, a little bit beyond the far post there by Kendall Ritchie. I think she'd like to have that one back. And again, you want to try to, to if you're playing that in swinger, maybe aim for the PK and swing it, curve it into uh, the area kind of in between the six and the PK spot. Again, that kind of freezes the keeper, makes the keeper second guess herself. Got a substitution uh, right at that corner kick. Emily Bates came over to the near sideline, grabbing the back of her leg just a little bit. And uh, so she may have a hamstring uh, issue, not quite sure. And the Aggies have sent in her sister, Kendall Bates. So Kendall Bates uh, will check into the lineup. Kendall comes in with three assists already on the season. The freshman out of Melissa, Texas. So it is Kendall Bates for Emily Bates. And uh, Kendall Bates will go to wide right side, and they'll actually tuck Tara Zemer inside. So Zemer and Addie McCain will play next to one another in front of Grace Piper. Allie Watt with the ball now, sends it out wide, or tries to. It's deflected there. Goes out of bounds on the far side. Hill for Texas A&M with and a Dave, quick throw in. A little bit of rain starting to fall again. This will only serve to make the field a little bit slicker and a little bit faster. Yeah, just kind of a light, light rain falling. Kind of an annoying drizzle. Yes. As the wind picks up a little bit, blowing out of the south to the north, that is right to left as you're, if you're watching on the, uh, SEC plus. Ball in the central third of the field here. Colorado College with it. It's Lauren Malay. What a ball. Nice ball for her. Going to be an offside call there. And I believe, let's see, on the far side. Not sure who that is on the far side. I think it's Jackie Hand that got called for being offside. Yeah, I think you're right. Jackie Hand, again, a, another, a lot of international flavor on the field. You got Jimena Lopez played for the U-20 women's uh, Mexican national team in the, in the uh, World Cup in France recently. Alsis Hallstorter, the, the Icelandic international. Jackie Hand is a member of New Zealand's U-20 national team who is also in France. Here comes the, the Aggies. Addie McCain, sorry, Jeff. Top of the attacking third, loses possession there. Uh, Johanna Hamlet. Clears it away to the far side of the field. Yeah, this is one of the things we see more and more of in college soccer. As uh, Bates for a Texas A&M gets it in to Addie McCain, who takes a quick shot from the top of the 18. And this really gets tough on goalkeepers as yep. they try to get yep. there. You get dealing with a with a wet ball. You want to try to keep your gloves dry. It makes it really tough, and everything gets a little bit dicey. Right, and one of Phil Stevenson, uh, the associate head coach for Texas A&M, one of his favorite kind of go-to cliches is you can't win the lottery if you don't buy a ticket, and that's especially true in these conditions, is that go ahead and take a chance if you have it because you don't know what it's going to what it's gonna do coming off the keeper's hands. Ball on the far side. Kendall Bates sends it in to the penalty area. It is sent back, and it'll be a throw-in Texas A&M as the rain comes down just a touch harder here. Holdest daughter for Texas A&M down into the corner to Kendall Bates. She'll get a cross off, but can't get the hips turned around, and it will go into the side netting. And another substitution. Johanna Hamblett will check out of the lineup. And checking into the lineup is a number four that we do not have. Yeah, yeah we do not have her on the roster. On the roster that we got, let me double check here. We don't have a number four. I think it may be Kayla Montoya, but I am not certain. And we apologize, we just don't have a four listed on the roster that was given to us by Colorado College. Texas A&M with the ball in their attacking half. Holdest daughter goes to ground, saves it for the Aggies, comes back to Jordan Hill. She'll launch a ball into the top of the D, chested down there by McCain. 
oldest daughter now. We'll get a shot off, send it high into the stands behind the North goal. And Addie McCain has not had a lot of touches in the middle third of the field. She has not been very involved in facilitating possession, but she has been really, really dangerous in front of the, or in and around the 18. She's gotten some looks on goal. And again, if AM is going to try to break down this 4 5 1, continue to break down this 4 5 1 for Colorado College, they are getting Jimena Lopez wide, and they're really working that right flank, whether it's Tara Zima or whether it was Kendall Ritchie. But again, the services from both of those two, from Zima and, and Ritchie, have not been good. So if they're going to continue to try to serve the ball in in the attacking third of the field from the flank, it's got to be better quality. The, the, the services are just not good enough right now. Rain really beginning to pick up here. Allie Watt with the ball, top of the attacking third. She's going to crank a shot again high and again, behind I, the goal. And I doubt the coaching staff has a problem with that at all, Dave. Substitutions, mass substitutions, line change for Texas A&M essentially. Looks like Allie Watt coming off. Reagan Smith going on for Allie Watt. Alistis Haldis daughter coming out. Brittany Crabtree replacing her. Sienna Arietta coming in for Tara Zemer. And Kate Hoydu yep, Kate coming Hoydu in for Addie McCain. So two new central midfielders, two new forwards for Texas A&M. Piper sends it out wide. It will go out of bounds and be a throw in for Colorado College about 15 yards off of the flag. Get the ball in up the sideline. Jordan Hill sends it high into the air off of a Colorado player and it's going to be Colorado College who will come up with it. Jackie Hand on the far side with it. Square ball near side to Lauren Malay. She tries to send the ball in. It's blocked there by Piper, but to get it right back, Malay sends a cross in. Over her target, ball still bounding around inside this penalty area. Near side, finally, Jimena Lopez, and now Sienna Arietta tripped up there as she got a foot on the ball. It'll be a free kick for Texas A&M. 14.30 left to play. Ten shots for Texas A&M, two of which have been on frame. Three shots for Colorado College, none of which have been on frame. Here come the Aggies again across the halfway line. Ahead to the middle of the field to Reagan Smith. Smith back to goal, drops it away from pressure to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie out near side to Jimena Lopez. In the channel on the near side. Takes it down toward the end line. Looking for the cross. Gets it. Well, a header there, I believe. Crabtree. That was Crabtree just at the near post. And I believe it went wide of the goal. But a great cross in by Lopez and a great run by Brittany Crabtree. Yeah, it really was. She really attacked that near post. Maybe even a little too much because that ball, she, she didn't quite have the angle to, to flick it on uh, in that near post. I think her run carried her a little too far beyond the near post. But great service, great patience by uh, Jimena Lopez to, again, create enough space against that, the right back um, Wheeler for uh, Colorado College and to wait for her runs to develop in front of goal. Here comes Colorado College in the attacking third now. Bree Alston with a defense. It's going to go over the end line, and it now will be a goal kick, Texas A&M. The rain continues to come down, slacked off just a little bit, and a substitution for Colorado College. It will be Lucia Costanza checking into the lineup for Jackie Hand. So, so uh, Costanza will be on the far side of the field. In the attack for the Colorado College Tigers. The Aggies with the ball now across the halfway line. Lost there by Kate Hoydu. And here comes the, the Tigers. In their attacking half now, they'll send it out wide, far side to Costanza. Too much pace on it. It's going to go over the end line. It'll be a throw in for Texas A&M, about 15 yards off of the flag on the far side. Jordan Hill will take it. 12-28 left to play in the first half. No score here in College Station, Texas. Grace Piper with it for the Aggies. Sends a ball into the middle, trying to get it to Reagan Smith. Deflected to the near side. Crabtree runs it down, cuts it away from pressure to Reagan Smith. They don't connect. 
And the ball goes to Colorado College. Whistle and a foul called. Be on Texas A&M. I'm trying to figure out. I think it's on Reagan what, Smith. I think he. I, I don't know why he would have played advantage from the uh, yeah, defensive third. That's what confused me was the, the was the advantage call. I wasn't quite sure, but at any event, that's what it was. And it will be a free kick taken by Camille Weaver, about 20 yards into the defending half, near side of the field. She gets her foot into it, sends it down. Is the range really kind of slacked off now? Just sprinkling. Headed over the near side. Through the circle now. Colorado College with it. Lauren Malay. She loses her footing and goes down. Sienna Arietta comes up with it for Texas A&M. Into Piper. Tried to one-touch the ball and really sent it right to a Colorado College player. And here they come on the counterattack. Going to lay it out near side. Trying to get it to Ray Conlon, but it's going to be Amanda Lopez, who wins that race. And just as I say, that's a rain starts coming down again. Kate Hoydu tried to send it up to Reagan Smith. They don't connect. Whistle and a foul call as Hoydu and Taylor Wheeler collide. And I believe that Hoydu will get, will get the card. And she does. She picks up the first yellow for Texas A&M. And it will be a free kick for... Colorado College about three yards into their defending half and just about equidistant outside of the center circle to the near side. And taking it will be Camille Weaver as the rain really starts to come down again. Kick comes in, Sienna Arietta gets a head on it, top of the attacking third, drops it out wide far side. The Aggies send it into their attacking half, but nobody's there. Colorado College does them a favor by sending it out of bounds, and the Aggies get the throw in back right in front of their own bench. Kendall Ritchie to Grace Piper, who will switch it far side to Kendall Bates. You're beginning to see a little bit of splashing on the field. Now, this, this water will not collect as Jimena Lopez gets a long ball looking for a cross. Does, sends it in! Closing on it was Crabtree just a step behind. And that, that's a great look from Jimena Lopez. That was absolutely intentional what she did because Jade Odom started cheating the cross. She saw Crabtree coming in from, yes, the, she from the weak You're side exactly of the field. Right. She started cheating the cross, and Jimena at the last minute adjusted her service and tried to tuck it into the far side netting. Corner kick for Texas A&M. Kendall Ritchie will be a left-footed in swinging corner. And Richie sends the ball in high, bounds around inside the six, cleared away there by Colorado College, chasing it down. It's Kendall Bates, and she'll drop it back to Bree Alston. Alston on the dribble, cuts it right down the middle of the field, gets it to Crabtree, tried to lay it out to Lopez. They don't connect, and now here comes Colorado College on the counter. Right down the middle of the field, in some space there, was uh, Lauren Millett first, and then they tried to drop it off and could not, co could not connect, but a real dangerous opportunity there on the counter for Colorado College. It went to, the, uh, went to number four, our uh, mystery player for Colorado College. And again, the game getting really, really sloppy right now. Yeah, I, I it think. is. I think part of it due to weather and part yeah. of it, and that, that also, uh, I mean, you've, I'm sure you've played in conditions like this. It begins to affect your concentration. Right, right. Bit. It's the whole soccer being just as mental as it is physical. I mean, the weather's mentally taking you out, so physically you're going to react. Uh, and, again, it shouldn't, it should, again, you still have a quality surface. You're not trying to avoid you know, multiple puddles on the field or a soft spot or anything like that. Um, so there's no reason to adjust what you want to do or alter your style of play. You still want to keep the ball on the ground uh, and, again, play into feet and have a, with a quality first touch. Um, you can still do what you want to do. Jordan Hill sends it inside the center circle to Sienna Arietta. She'll send it out wide near side, trying to get it to Jimena Lopez, but it's cut off there by Taylor Wheeler. She'll send a long ball forward, trying to get it 
uh, to the forward who was running onto it for Colorado College, but they just don't connect. Aggies with the ball now. Kate Hoydu to Sienna Arietta, back to Grace Piper inside the center circle. Piper comes to the near side. Lays the ball off there to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie ahead now to Reagan Smith. The ball took a hop on her. She lost possession, but it comes back to the Aggies, and Ritchie will send a square ball far side to Jordan Hill. Hill with it. Sends it out wide. I believe that on the far side of the field, that is Kendall Bates. Back to Hill. Hill tried to send it in to Sienna Arietta. It's cleared away out of bounds by Colorado College, and it'll be a throw in, once again, for Texas A&M. And we're going to have another substitution for the Aggies. Checking into the lineup will be Abby Grace Cooper. The sophomore out of Plano, Texas, and checking out of the lineup will be Brittany Crabtree, a substitution for Colorado College as well. Checking into the lineup will be Riley Prilwitz, and checking out will be, again, number four. <laughs> Got to see if I can find out who she is at halftime. Ball out of bounds on the far side of the field. Throw in for Colorado College, deep out of their defending third. They get it up to the halfway line. Bree Alston trying to run it down for Texas A&M. Actually, she's going to let it go out of bounds. It'll be an Aggie throw in. Six minutes and two seconds left to play here in the first half. Texas A&M and Colorado College tied at zero as it continues to rain here at Ellis Field. Grace Piper sends a square ball far side to Jordan Hill ahead to Reagan Smith. Smith will play it down into the channel on the right side. It'll be cleared out of bounds by Colorado College. And a throw in for Texas A&M about 15 yards off of the flag on the far side to our left. Kendall Ritchie will take the throw in for the Aggies. She drops it back to Sienna Arietta. Arietta sends it in with her left foot to the corner of the 18, sent away again by Colorado College. Another throw in for Texas A&M. Jordan Hill this time, 10 yards into the attacking half to Arietta. Back to Grace Piper. Piper right down the middle of the field, chested down there by Colorado College. And it was Hoydu who got the ball there. Little poke pass to Abby Grace Cooper. And it's going to go out of bounds on the near side. It was, it was deflected by the Tigers. And the throw in, Texas A&M. Jimena Lopez will take it and does into Arietta. Arietta tries to slot it ahead to Cooper. They misconnect. Cleared back to the halfway line. And a whistle and a foul. They're called on Rachel Martino, I believe. It's going to be Prowitz, number 15. Yep, you're right. That's 15, not 19. Uh, Prowitz, who stepped on the foot of uh, Bree Austin. She appears to be okay. And it'll be a free kick for Texas A&M. Just a couple of steps into the attacking half, just to the near side of the dead center of the field. It'll be Kendall Ritchie who will take it as the rain has just about stopped. Richie sends the ball in, bounding around inside the six. Reagan Smith gets on the end of it, far side, sends a cross back in, deflected away. Arietta at the top of the 18, takes a shot high. She almost chipped the ball. She didn't drive it. She didn't hit with the inside of yep. her foot and just, got underneath it. And just, it just didn't get it clean. It. No, it didn't hit it clean. And looks like lightning has been, I think they're going to, Stop the clock with three, about three and a half minutes left, and they are clearing the field. So I imagine that means lightning was detected within an eight-mile radius. Dave, correct me if I'm wrong there. That is correct. Actually, five-mile radius. Five-mile radius of the, uh, of the complex. So uh, we have a stoppage, as Jeff said, with 328 left to play in the first half. 0-0 uh, zero, zero is our score. 12 shots for Texas A&M, three on frame, three shots for Colorado College. The Aggies with uh, the run of, with a load of run of play here. And, uh, 
but just nothing to show for it yet. Hopefully corner kicks, the Aggies lead five to nothing. That's kind of where we are. So what we're going to do here is uh, take a break and send it back uh, to the studio if we can, Colin. Uh, and uh, we will keep in touch with you, let you know what we hear uh, as to when this game might be resumed because of the, uh, of the break for lightning in the area. So we will send it back to the studio. You've been listening to Texas A&M Soccer on the Zone 102.7 FM and uh, on RadioAggieLand.com as well as on the SEC Network. So uh, sorry about the false start, Colin. Take it away. have three minutes and 28 seconds left in the first half. And our, we are tied at zero. The Aggies have 12 shots, three of which are on frame, three shots for Colorado College. None of those are on frame. And so uh, that's kind of where we are right now. Both teams again out on the field. And, and Jeff, this is, uh, this is one of those times where you kind of have to switch off, but then you switch back on from, from a player's point of view. Yeah, and this is um, this is A and M's. I, I don't know about Colorado College, College what their what their situation has been over the season, but this is A and M's second uh, second uh, lightning delay. Uh, they got delayed. Kickoff got delayed two hours against Santa Clara on uh, on, on Sunday night, um, and uh, and. So when it when it comes to this again, you, you got to stay mentally switched on to a certain extent. Uh, obviously, rehydrate, maybe get a light snack. You know, don't get loaded down with a meal. That doesn't make sense. But at the same time, you got to stay mentally switched on. So I'm sure there's a period of time where the coaches talked about the first half, made adjustments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then in A&M's case, they have the luxury of their of their locker room. I'm sure they watch soccer, whether that was film of Colorado College or whether that was just a college soccer game or, or EPL or whatever it was, I'm sure soccer was on TV just just to, to, to maintain the mindset to a certain extent. And then once they got the all clear, maybe you revisit some of those points uh, and, and talk about adjustments going into the second half. So I don't think it was a as big of a mental break um, as, as some, it might lead you to believe. Uh, but again, this is they've got to get themselves physically ready. So You're they, exactly right, though, on the watching soccer. I ask Associate uh, head coach Phil Stevenson right. uh, after the after the game on Sunday evening, I said, "So, how did you handle the uh, you know the, the delay and what you did in the locker room?" And he said, "Oh, there was some great uh, there was some great college soccer on. We came yep. in and watched SEC soccer on yep. the television sure. in, in the clubhouse." So, yep. so I suspect you're probably right. That is probably what they did uh, before. Uh, I mean. This, this particular answer. Yeah, so I'm sure it was bookended with conversations. You don't, I mean, we had, we had a 40-minute weather delay. I, I doubt you want to go on a congressional filibuster with X's and O's and things of that nature. But at the same time, review the first half. What do we do well? What do we do not so well? What did they do well? Where, where are they vulnerable? And then, again, uh, not relax, but not completely wind down. But, again, stay, stay engaged as it pertains to the game. Uh, watch soccer. Talk about soccer rehydrate, re-nourish to a certain extent, and then, you know, with five or ten minutes before the before you come back on the field, that's where you make your coaching points. That's where you make your adjustments. Here's the two or three or four things that we need to do going into the second half or going in, onto the field from the, from the weather delay. So once again, it's Colorado College and Texas A&M. We are scoreless here with two minutes, three minutes and 28 seconds left to play in the first half, and then we will have about a three or four minute break or so at the conclusion of what would normally be the first half when this 328 comes off the clock. Won't have the full halftime, just have a, a very abbreviated halftime and then we will get the second half underway. So that's where we're gonna continue to uh, handle this. 
and we will, when the second half, remember the way it is in college. Uh, substitution rules a little bit different. When you check out of the game in the first half, you cannot re-enter in the first half, so the Aggies will not, they will have the players more than likely that they left the field with, uh, and as we look out there, that will be, uh, Reagan Smith will be up top with Abby Grace Cooper. With Abby Grace Cooper, you're right. And the midfield will consist of Jimena Lopez, uh, Kendall Bates, Kate Hoydu, and Sienna Arietta. Uh, the back line will be the same that started the game. On the left-hand side, it'll be Kendall Ritchie. In the middle, it will be, will be Bree Austin. And on the right-hand side, uh, it will be Jordan Hill, and of course, of course, Cosette Marche will be in goal. So that's that's kind of where we will start. The Aggies will start the second half, and then of course, after this, uh, after, when the second half starts, the substitution rules are that you can re-enter the game once. So you can start the second half, come out, and then go back in one time. So again, substitution rules just a little bit different in college soccer than they are at the international level or professional level that you see if you spent your summer watching the World Cup or watch uh, Premier League or any of the other professional soccer leagues. All right, so uh, that's where we are. The Aggies are back on the field, and it's Colorado College who is now back on the field again. Three minutes and 40 seconds actually left in the first half. I was wrong, remembered incorrectly finding at that age that happens more and more frequently. So that's where we are right now. Again, no score. And we will start. The ball will be dropped down to Colorado College at the top of their D, and they will send it into the Aggie defending half. Kendall Ritchie will catch it on her foot, send the ball across the field far side to Jordan Hill, and we are back underway. Again, 3.28 now left in the first half. Bree Alston will take it and drop it back now to Cosette Morche, and she'll switch the field to the near side. Kendall Ritchie. Sending into the back line of Colorado College, and they will take it out of bounds. It'll be a throw in now for Texas A&M right in front of the Aggie bench. Near side to our right. Ritchie sends it in to, to Grace Piper. Piper. To Hill, back to Bree Alston in the middle. She'll pit and she'll dribble up just short of the circle and send it near side. So Richie now back to Piper again. Excuse me, to uh, Alston again. Just a very light rain falling right now, and it's lost out of bounds on the far side. Jimena Lopez couldn't keep it in play. Throw in for Colorado College. Rebound comes back, and Lauren Millett saves it, settles it, sends it up the sideline. Grace Piper gets it for Texas A&M. Ball right down the middle of the field, kind of behind everybody. And it'll go all the way to the end line and over. And it will be a free kick for, or goal kick rather, for Colorado College as we approach the two-minute mark. Neither team playing with a ton of urgency. No, I'm just beginning if the strategy is not just to play this 340 out and regroup and Grace Piper inside the center circle drops it back to Richie Abby Grace Cooper Hoidu Hoidu tried to send it down the near sideline gets the rebound and does Kendall Richie uh, uh, Kendall Bates near side had her uh, cross blocked cleared away Trying to run it down was uh, Riley Prilwitz for Colorado College, but it's uh, Bree Austin's going to drop it back to Cosette Morche, who'll switch it far side to Jordan Hill. But you're right, there's not, uh, certainly on the Aggies' part, not a lot of urgency here uh, apparent as we burn the last few minutes of the, of the first half. Here comes Colorado College again. Nice, uh, nice defensive effort there by Sienna Arietta to come up from behind and poke the ball away. The Aggies come up with it. Kendall Bates on the near side. Now inside the center circle on the dribble, tried to send it ahead, blocked there uh, by uh, Ansley Queen. 
Colorado College got the ball down. They sent it into the penalty area. That was uh, Ray Conlon. Nothing came of it as she tried to hit Riley Prilwitz again. The Aggies have the ball. Hoy do at the halfway line to uh, Abby Grace Cooper, who'll switch the field far side to Lopez. Lopez stops, gives some ground. Tries to chip it in with their left foot, does. Flicked on there by Hoydu, but nothing on it. It's going to go out of bounds. And the first half will come to an end. No score here. Again, we're going to take about a three-minute break. We will take a quick commercial break and come back with a second half. We're 0-0, Texas A&M and Colorado College. When it comes to Toyota trucks, you have more than just a tailgate. You have a dinner table. Hey, pass the ketchup. Oh, I'll leave the last burger. Yeah, that'd be me. A trophy shelf for your perfectly cooked, award-winning... Uh, how much time you want on this one? Two or three minutes? Uh, they're doing a... Looks like a... Are they seriously doing a 15-minute halftime? I thought they were... At the very end of the first half, about 40 minutes, no took a brief halftime break, out. and we are now getting ready to get the second half underway. Texas A&M and Colorado College. All right, sounds good. Zero, zero. And uh, Jeff, you know, when we came back to play that final three minutes and 40 seconds there of the first half, you and I were uh, remarking that uh, Texas A&M kind of came out just sort of uninspired. Looks like they... Uh, they left something in the locker room, and they're going to have to get it back up here to uh, uh, if they need to come away, if they want to come away with the victory tonight. Right, right. And Colorado College wasn't much better. It was a pretty lethargic three minutes and 40 seconds uh, coming out of that weather delay. Uh, but, again, you'll see, uh, you know, just kind of by the looks of things, it looks like um, most of the starters will be, uh, if not all the starters, will be will be coming back onto the field for Texas A&M. Um, and I'd imagine you'd see more of the same for Colorado College. Uh, but, again, they've been – they don't have anything necessarily to show for it. Uh, Morshe hasn't had a whole lot of work to do back there. She's had some some balls to play uh, with her feet, uh, with uh, with with negative balls played from her back line, looking to break pressure. She's had to. Uh, she has. I don't think she's handled a ball yet, uh, either out of the air or on the ground. So, but nonetheless, Colorado College has shown their commitment to the counterattack. Again, they're looking to get numbers forward. They're looking to put pressure on Anum's back three. They're looking to get into the space on either side of AM's outside backs. And then they're looking to overwhelm Bree Olsen and Grace Piper with two and three runners in the middle of the field with their target forward and their two attacking mids on the counterattack. Whereas their wide forwards are looking to exploit the space on either side of Jordan Hill and Kendall Ritchie because, um, because they play so tight. Those back three play so tight. But, but for AM, it's about playing consistent. It's about consistency. It's about consistency in, in possession. It's about consistency in, in, in breaking down a Colorado College team, which is committed to putting 10 people behind the ball. All right, looks like a little bit of a lineup change here for Texas A&M. Emily Bates, who came out off of the field uh, with, let's see, with about, uh, about halfway through the first half, will not re-enter here in the second half. And Kendall Bates, her younger sister, will start for Texas A&M. Excuse me, that is going to be, uh, take that back, she will not be out there. Reagan Smith is going to be up top, it looks like, with Allie Y. And, and Alstis Hollow's daughter will, will drop into will the drop into mid. the midfield. You're yep. right. And uh, on the left-hand side in the midfield, it'll be uh, Jimena Lopez, the right side, uh, Tara Zemer, Addie McCain, Holder's daughter, the central mids, Grace Piper, the holding mid there. And uh, the back line remains the same on the left side. Kendall Ritchie in the middle, it's Bree Austin. On the right-hand side, it's Jordan Hill and Cosette Morche in goal. So that's, uh, that's the lineup that starts the second half for Texas A&M. 12 shots for the Aggies in the first half, three on frame, three shots for Colorado College. None of those three were on frame. Corner kicks, uh, five to nothing in favor of Texas A&M, but the score is as even as it can get, 0-0 here. Reagan Smith with the ball down in the corner on the far side for Texas A&M. Loses it over the end line, and it'll be a goal kick for Colorado College. And uh, Jade Odom in goal. Jade Odom, who had a couple of big-time saves in that first yes, half. Yes, she did. She did. She stopped a point-blank header there. I believe it was... Uh, 
Hoidu, who got a head on it late. Ball comes to Watt here. She gets this to hold his daughter. Nutmegs uh, Madeline Stesny. The Aggies can't keep it, keep that run going, but they get the ball back. Far side of the field, Jimena Lopez will drop it back to Kendall Ritchie, right at the halfway line, and then back to Bree Austin in the middle. Texas A&M getting things organized. Austin sends a long ball diagonal on the near side, Tara Zemer. Zemer settles it right in front of the Aggie bench. Inside to Addie McCain. McCain to Watt and back to Zemer. First touch a little bit too hard there from Zemer. Lost possession, but it's going to be cleared out of bounds by Colorado College, and it will be a throw in for Texas A&M. Jordan Hill here on the near side, right below us in front of the Aggie bench. Gets it down the sideline to Addie McCain, and it will run over the inline ball. McCain tried to save it there, but it just trickles over the inline. It'll be a goal kick for Colorado College. And with Emily Bates off the field, it's imperative that Addie McCain increase her work rate a little bit, make herself available to the ball. Again, in the first half, she saw the ball at her feet. Uh, the, the, the most frequently she saw the ball at her feet was in, was in the attacking third off of rebounds, off of services. She really wasn't much of a factor in facilitating possession or, or distribution. So she, with, with Emily Bates out, she's got to find pockets of space and make herself available to everybody on the field. Comes Colorado College. They got the ball out on the near side to Jackie Hand, but she lost possession. Now here comes the Aggies. Hold this daughter to Watt in front of the Aggie bench. Watt with it at her feet. Gets fast past the first defender. Takes it down into the corner. Loses it there. And it's going to go out of bounds. Sit out of bounds by Madeline Stesney here on the near side. Quick throw in. Texas A&M to Reagan Smith. Back to hold his daughter. Near side. Got, has, got a shot off. It goes off of the foot of Camille Weaver over the end line. And it will be a corner kick for Texas A&M. Their sixth of the evening. Aggies keeping the pressure up, looking for that opportunity to break the dam open. Be a left-footed in swinging corner, near side to our right. Kendall Ritchie will take it. Ball comes in. Flicked over there, over everybody by Colorado. I thought it was off of a Colorado head there. So the, uh, our referee is saying no, and will award a goal kick to Colorado. Uh, almost a perfectly placed ball by Kendall Ritchie. In swinging, driven in, wasn't floated in, right into the runs. Good timing on the runs by four or five Aggie attackers. Uh, Holder's, Holder's daughter was there. Grace Piper was there. Uh, Addie McCain was there. There were a number of options, but uh, uh, just unfortunate they weren't able to convert on that. Jade Olam puts it in play. The Aggies are able to win it. Jordan Hill sends it ahead to Addie McCain. McCain Try to get around one player, went out of bounds, off of uh, Kayla Montoya, quick throw in, Texas A&M, to Watt, to Zemer, ahead to Reagan Smith, she'll drop it away from pressure, back to Grace Piper, she'll send it out wide, far side, Jimena Lopez, she'll send it away from pressure, back to Kendall Ritchie, Ritchie, chips the ball in, trying to get it to hold his daughter, picked off there by Lauren, Lauren Malay, but she loses Possession to Piper, who switches it near side to Jordan Hill. Ahead to Addie McCain. McCain pokes it out wide to Zemer, near side of the penalty area. Zemer sending it in to Watt, and Watt and Zemer miscommunicated. Watt broke the wrong way, or one way, and uh, Zemer sent the ball the other way. The Aggies win it back. Nice hustle play there by Jordan Hill. They get it ahead to hold his daughter. Hold his daughter. To Watt out on the flank, near side. Watt drills the ball in on the ground. Didn't hit anybody. It ends up saved there by Jade Odom. Uh, kind of a shot cross scenario there. I don't know if she was. Uh, Reagan Smith was making a, a nice yeah. little shallow run there. Uh, kept herself on side, but it, it kind of snuck its way towards the near post. So uh, you could call that either way. Good hustle play again by Jordan Hill to win the ball at the top of the Aggie defending third. Gets it ahead to Piper, who switches the field far side to Jimena Lopez. Lopez playing the left mid slot for the Aggies. To hold his daughter, and then hold his daughter out wide to Richie. Richie up the sideline to Lopez. Top of the attacking third now. She'll chip it in. To McCain, back to Reagan Smith, top of the D, trying to get past the last defender. 
to slot the ball through. Can't do it, has it poked away. Maybe one too many touches there. Rebound comes to the Aggies, and they settle it and get it back. And uh, Tara Zemer, it was Grace Piper who sent it in to the right wing here. Zemer trying to chase it down, slip down right on the sideline. It's going to go over the end line. Substitution for Colorado. Colorado uh, College, Kylie Suter will enter the lineup. Checking out will be uh, Tara Richter. Ball trickles down to Cosette Morche. She'll play it ahead wide far side to Kendall Ritchie, who will dribble up. Send it across the halfway line ahead to Addie McCain. McCain runs into trouble there. Has the ball stolen away by Lauren Malay, and it's going to be a foul called on Addie McCain. and be, be a restart here, Colorado College, from the just to the far side of center. Top and again, of, top of their defending third. Lauren Millay, very active and very impressive on the ball in the first half. Big time factor, again, involved in all those counterattacks. Wave after wave of counterattack by Colorado College. But hasn't been much of a factor so far in the second half. And again, AM has increased their pressure. AM has increased their work rate. Um, and, and doing a really good job of playing a minimal touch mentality. A simple soccer, playing the way they face, getting the ball off your foot quickly. Bree Austin sends a high ball near sideline in front of the Aggie bench. It'll bounce once, twice, and go out of bounds. Tara Zemer, the closest Aggie to it, couldn't quite get on the end of it, and it'll be a throw-in here on the near side. Picked off there by Zemer to McCain. Into the middle of the field, trying to hit Holder's daughter. They don't complete it, but the Aggies get the, pat, get the ball back. Grace Piper switches it far side to Kendall Ritchie ahead to... Lopez, she lost possession, and here comes Colorado College on the counter, far side of the field. Three on four. Hold the ball up on the far side. Now dump it down into the corner. Pursuit there from Bree Austin, and it's going to go off of Austin over the inline. First corner kick of the night for Colorado College, and this is where they can be dangerous. Yeah, again, it's one of the great equalizers in soccer is set pieces. Um, so this is their first one, and this may be the only one they need if they put this in the back of that. It completely changes the game. Lauren Millay goes over to take it for Colorado College. This will be a right-footed outswinging corner kick. They've got three on the near side of the penalty area. Send the ball high, the top of the six. Johanna Hamblick got a head on it, but the Aggies win the ball. Allie Watt from Hill, whistling a foul call on uh, Texas A&M. Aggie fans here on this, this side wanted a foul call before that when, Wa uh, when uh, Watt had the ball. They didn't get that call. Picked off the, 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 on the turnover. Colorado College got the ball back, and then the foul was called on Texas A&M. Freak for kick, Camille Weaver will take it about four yards into the attacking half and about 20 yards off of the near sideline. Weaver sends a high ball in. Top of the 18, headed down there by Piper. Shot taken, goal, Colorado College. And it's Jackie Hand who put it in Got it inside the far post from the top of the 18 with her right foot. And what a great goal it was. Again, rebound off the set piece. Again, we, we just talked about it on the, on the last corner kick for Colorado College, is that they've been, they've been severely outplayed in the second half, 10 minutes into the second half. a has been the aggressor. a has been the more dangerous team. a has been the better team. But set pieces Absolutely. are a great equalizer. Weather is a great equalizer. The officiating is a great equalizer. And then we saw one of the three great equalizers in the form of a set piece, rebound off a set piece, and a great one-time finish off a bad clearance from Texas A&M. Well, the Aggies need to switch it on here, get back in this game. Paula's daughter lays it off to Watt, near side of the penalty area, cross comes in. Reagan Smith with a touch on it at about eight yards out, sends it over the crossbar. And they almost responded within 10 seconds. But that's got to be consistent. It's got to be consistent. They, the last thing, the last thing they can do, the last thing they need to do is is to, is to panic. Again, there's a big difference between playing with urgency and playing in, in a playing panicked. Official has stopped the clock and gone down and spoken to uh, Jade Odom, the uh, 
Colorado College keeper. I'm not sure about what. She has the ball spotted at the top of the sixth. And now he blows his whistle again, and the clock starts. He'll be headed out of bounds here on the near side off of the goal kick. Throw in for Colorado College right in front of the A&M bench. Nice tackle there by uh, Grace Piper. Huh. Ball goes all the way back to Cosette Morche. She switches the field to the far side. We got a whistle and and uh, let's see, clock stoppage. I believe we're going to have, may have a card as Amanda Lopez went down on the far side. And yes, we will have a card issued to Colorado College. So Johanna Hamblett will get the yellow card. We've got 34-01 left to play. Texas A&M on the short end of a one to nothing score here, despite having outshot Colorado College 14-4 and have a, have a corner kick advantage of 6-1. to one. As Jeff was saying, it is uh, set pieces are a great equalizer. And, uh, and that's what happened. Substitution for Colorado College. Johanna Hamlet will check out of the uh, lineup. And uh, Tony uh, Semisferos will check into the lineup. Her first appearance tonight. We're back in play. Piper over to the near side to Hill. Lays it down the sideline to Zemer. Yeah. Zemer on the near side. Tries to get past the first defender. Can't do it. Gets a rebound. Drops it back to Hill. She will serve it into the top of the 18. It was curving away. They are headed back by Texas A&M to Piper. Now to Bree Alston. Five yards into the attacking half. She sends it ahead to Zemer. Nice job there. We're going to have a whistle and a foul call there. On... Uh, Tara Zemer, high foot. All right, it'll be a free kick for Colorado College, taken by Camille Weaver, about uh, 26 yards out. She'll send it down the near side of the field. Rebound comes to Colorado College. And uh, Millay, she'll switch the field to the far side. It'll go out of bounds, too far for Jenna Wilt to run it down. Throw in Texas A&M up the sideline quickly. Jimena Lopez, Lopez, across the halfway line, down the sideline to Watt. Watt cuts it inside to Holdest Daughter. Holdest Daughter will take a shot just wide of the post on the near side. Wow, and she had, she had Odom beat. I mean, she, I don't think Odom expected her to hit that ball. Again, she, her hips weren't square to the goal. Her hips were actually facing the sideline, but she was able to wrap her foot around the ball and drive that to the far post, and it didn't look like it missed by much. Goal kick comes out from Jade Odom, short of the halfway line. The Aggies trying to run it down on the near side of the field. It's going to go out of bounds. Quick throw in. Texas A&M. They'll get the ball in quickly and say stop and uh, substitution for the Aggies. Checking into the lineup for Texas A&M will be Macy Cole. She will come in for Jimena Lopez. Cole will take the throw in right in front of the Aggie bench. Get it in to hold his daughter. Back to Cole. Now back to Hill at the halfway line. She'll switch it into the middle of the field to Bree Austin. Now inside the center circle. She'll dump it out wide far side to Kendall Ritchie. Ritchie. Chip the ball in high. It'll go wide of the post on the far side by about five yards or so. Got too much into that, I believe. Yeah, I think she might have mishit that a little bit, too. Uh, I, there were numbers in the box, a uh, couple runs towards the PK, and I, 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 for quite frankly, I think she just missed it that. 31-14 left to play. The Aggies down one to nothing to Colorado College. Ball will go all the way back to... Cosette Morche. She'll pick it up inside the penalty area, switch the field, and roll it out quickly to Kendall Ritchie on the other side. Aggies playing with a sense of urgency. They get the ball ahead to Allie Watt. Watt cuts it. 
Hold his daughter. Takes a shot. Go. Texas A&M up on her right foot. What a rocket. But off this hold his daughter. And that's what happens. Uh, and when Allie Watt, she had dropped in again, much like she did against Santa Clara to score the first goal of the game. She dropped in. She separated herself from the center backs for Colorado College. She was able to turn, go at them. She committed three, if not four, players to her. A couple of them made sliding efforts towards her, which opened up a ton of space for Alsis Hull's daughter off her left shoulder. She found her front foot, took a touch, got herself set, and just a rocket shot into the back of the net to equalize this game. And she can really pull the trigger quickly. I mean, she, she really can, can. Get, a, get a shot off very quickly. And she's and got she such did. a she's got such a reliable first touch. Alsis does so she doesn't. Very rarely does she have an oops touch or a makeup touch. You right. know, she doesn't have to take a second touch to correct her first touch. Her first touch is so sound that she can absolutely put it on frame from comfortably from within 30 or 35 yards on her second touch. Throw in on the far side, Texas A&M. Kendall Ritchie will take it. So we're back level, Dave, and so exactly. we'll see how this game evolves. I mean, does does A&M keep their foot on the gas? Does Colorado College, college uh, uh, commit more, more numbers forward or go back to a really aggressive counter? Um, does a &M get their outside mids involved? Does Allie Watt continue to drop? Does Alsis continue to work to find the ball? So it'll be really interesting to see how that how that equalizing goal uh, opens up this game. Addie McCain into the attacking half. Reagan Smith now lays it out wide near side to Cole. She'll cut it back to Reagan Smith. Smith back to Cole near side. Poked away, but Holdest on her gets it and drops it back to Jordan Hill. Hill will chip it into the middle of the field to Grace Piper. Piper now switches it. Kendall Ritchie, far side. And Ritchie will switch it back to the near side. Jordan Hill with the ball on the ground. Ahead now to McKay. Piper will take a shot. And she should have taken a touch. She did, yep. she did not need to hit that one touch. But good ball movement. Outside back to outside back. They're only playing with one forward so that that opportunity is there. A little bit of inside-outside game, but again, uh, good idea. A little layoff to Grace Piper, but again, she should have taken it. She can hit that ball with her left foot. She can really strike the ball. She forced it. Uh, yep. She didn't need to. Yep, just a little bit, uh, little bit over-anxious. Low kick comes out. The Aggies win it. McCain chips it in, tries to get inside the penalty area to Watt. It's going to go over the line. And, they, and God, what a hustle play by Allie Watt to win a corner kick for Texas A&M. That is a play that I don't know that anybody else in the country can make as Watt caught up to the ball, got around it, sent it off of the defender as it crossed the line. Again, she had very little chance of serving a quality ball across the face of the goal, but she did have a chance to earn a corner there. Addie McCain will go over to take it. Far side to our right. This will be a right-footed in-swinging corner kick for Texas A&M. McCain swings it in. A little bit too far off of the line. Headed back to McCain, however, and she'll drop it back now, trying to get it to Kendall Ritchie, but it's picked off there by Lauren Millay. Here she comes. Up Great. across the halfway line. Sends the ball forward. Trying to get it ahead there to Kylie Souter. It's going to go out of bounds, and it will be a throw in Texas A&M. That, that was a that was a 2v3, 3v3 to, to, to 3v4 for AM. Great recovery effort from Grace Piper there. Whistle and a foul called. Right in, uh, on uh, Tony Samos Ferros. Right in front of the Colorado College bench. And uh, the Aggies will put it in play quickly. And another substitution here. No, he said the ball was rolling oh, when, okay. when, the, when it was struck. Uh, you're right. You're right. All right, we'll take the free kick again. It'll be Bree Austin, about three yards off of the near sideline, right in front of the Colorado College bench to our left. Get it into uh, Grace Piper and just a, a, a bad touch there by Piper. Tried to get it back to Austin, but Austin couldn't reach it. It goes out of bounds, and it'll be a throw in for Colorado College. Now in front of their own bench in their attacking, uh, attacking half. Throw in taken by Carla Montoya. 
Victoria tries to send the ball in as it came back to her, goes off of the body of Holdestotter. Aggies trying to win it, can't do it. Shot taken there from distance by uh, Lauren Millay, and it's gathered in easily. And we're seeing more Not of the Lauren Millay Millay that we saw in the first half. She's really increased her work rate. Here come the Aggies. Far side of the field. Zemer sends the ball in to the penalty spot. A missed clearance there by Colorado College, but coming out to fall on it is uh, Jade Odom in goal. <coughs> Odom punched the ball away, across the halfway line. Piper for Texas A&M got ahead on it. He'll come over to the near side of the field. Kept in bounds there. Here comes Colorado College. With it on the dribble is Jackie Hand. She'll slot it in the middle to Malay. Malay gets around the first defender. Can't make it past Bree Alston. Got a whistle and a foul called, however, on Bree Alston as Lauren Malay went down. And it will be a free kick from a dangerous spot just outside the D and just to the near side of center. So if you're Colorado College, again, yeah, you're about 25 yards out. I, I'd absolutely take a chance on goal. Uh, A&M's going to hold the 18. Referee's going to back him up a couple yards. But, I, I, yeah, I'm, if I'm Lauren Millay, I'm absolutely trying to bend this around the wall. Again, Cosette Morche, six foot two, Just a phenomenal goalkeeper. See what Millay decides to do here. Approaches the ball, drills it in. Parried by Cosette Morche. What a great effort from Malay. What a perfectly Over placed goal. goal. Or that was. I thought for a moment, the reason I hesitated, the ball came down on top of the rail, the backside of the net. I thought it might have been in goal, but... Uh, and it fooled more Perry over the crossbar. It fooled more Shea a little bit. She started her, her jump a little bit early. But again, at six foot two, um, she has a little bit of, with, with her height, there's a little bit of a luxury there. You can you can get away with it, and she, she was able to, but barely able to parry it over the bar. Substitution, uh, Johanna Hamblet will check back in the lineup for uh, Tony uh, Samafiros, and it will be a corner kick for Colorado College, near side to our left. They send the ball in. Nice job there by Cosette Morche. She takes a blow on top of her head. She is up. As Morche is just fearless in terms of going into uh, yeah, a crowd. She, she's fantastic in there. And it's not just about height either. She's got no. very reliable hands. The timing, timing on her approaches are good. She's got good technique. She rolls it out near side to Jordan Hill. Now back in the middle to Grace Piper. 23-23 left to play. We're tied at one. Both goals here came in the second half. The first one by Jackie Hand for Colorado College with 35.09 left to play. And the second by uh, Austis Holdest's daughter with 30 minutes and 44 seconds left to play. Free kick for Texas A&M. Kendall Ritchie, now it's gonna be Bree Alston who will take it. Alston will take it about six yards into the attacking half, far side of the field. Austin looking to put this about the top of the 18. Nope, she's going to send it all the way in. Pulled it left, and it goes into the stands. I'm not sure what the plan was on that one. I don't think that was the plan. I, it looked more like a goal kick than it did a, 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 an attempt on goal. And speaking of goal kicks, this one will belong to Jade Odom and the Colorado College Tigers. Just a wasted opportunity. Coming There's out with it. Here's Malay again yep. on the ball. Lauren facilitating Malay. the counterattack. Really impressed with her play tonight. Ball goes down. One of the Aggies fell down. Colorado College with it in their attacking third. Now they'll drop it back to Malay in the middle of the field. She's going to take a shot, and it'll go wide of the near post. Again, that was from 40 yards out. Yep. Uh, again, she could play for anybody. Uh, I'm really, really impressed with her work rate, her, uh, her technical consistency. 
Um, her change of speed, change of direction, her ability to break multiple people down on the ball, her vision, uh, she's an impressive player. Malay gets it, trying to lay it out wide to the far side to Hamlet. They miscommunicate, and the Aggies pick it off. Addie McCain to Watt, one touch to hold his daughter in the middle of the field, through the center circle. Tried to lay it out wide to Watt. Not a pass there that could get through. The Aggies get it back. McCain again inside the center circle. Chips it ahead. Reagan Smith was at the top of the 18. And the keeper for uh, Colorado College just misplayed the ball as it was just coming to her, kind of a slow rolling ball. And uh, wet ball, wet gloves, not sure what it was, but it just goes through her hands over the end line. It'll be a corner kick, Texas A&M. And, and that was just such a poorly played ball from Addie McCain. Too, entirely yeah. too direct. Uh, she was kind of in the middle third where the middle third meets the attacking third. She played a ball, just a, a pointless ball uh, into the box, but she was bailed out by, uh, by Odom. Corner kick Aggies, far side to our right. Addie McCain sends the ball in high. And let's see who got ahead on it. I believe it was Colorado College, and it will be another corner kick this time from the near side of the field. Kendall Ritchie will come over to, to swing this in. 20 minutes, 27 seconds left. And again, you see Colorado College defending in zone with all 11, all 11 players. Ball comes in from Ritchie, near post. Another corner. Another corner kick, I believe it's deflected. Yes, over the end line, near side by Colorado College again, and the Aggies will take another corner. This one comes in. Richie. Oh, Texas AM. I'm not sure if that was an on goal misplay. We'll see who it is. It, it should have been. It, Reagan Smith. Reagan Smith is celebrating like it was her. Yeah. But she may have she may have caused the own goal. It sure did look like an own goal, but it, you know what? A goal is a goal is a goal, uh, especially when it provides you with a two to one lead. But Reagan Smith could have been the one that made that near post run uh, to cause that havoc, to cause that chaos, and, and to potentially cause that that own goal. So we'll try to get a replay here for you to get something definitive. But they've credited Reagan Smith with the goal. Substitution. Uh Lucia Costanza checks out of the lineup, and checking in will be Katie McDonald. Did you get a view of it on the replay? Yeah, it looks like it looks like Reagan Smith might have slipped in between two yep. or three defenders and, and gotten a piece of that. I think you're right. I don't Reagan whether Smith. it was a forehead or an earlobe or, or what it was, <laughs> but uh, but it, rightfully so. So with 19 uh, 40 left to play in the contest, Reagan Smith for Texas A&M. That is the third goal of her Texas A&M career and her second this season to go along with one assist. And it puts the Aggies up two to one. So much like the Oklahoma game, um, you know, where they were down, where the Texas A&M was down one to nothing uh, at halftime. And uh, from what I understand, the A&M locker room speech was all about accountability. Right. Uh, Self-accountability and holding your teammates accountable as well. Um, I think that that goal from Colorado College might have just kind of kind of poking the sleeping bear because uh, A&M has really put their foot on the gas. That Their work rate has increased. Their physicality has increased. Uh, the, the simplicity of their game has increased. And they've really got their foot on the gas right now. They're definitely the aggressor. Hold the starter with it. Drops it back right to the halfway line to Jordan Hill, near side. Hill will switch the field, force Kendall Ritchie to retreat about 35 yards to chase it down, but she does. Now she's going to send it back to Hill here on the near side. Hill ahead to hold his daughter. To Macy Cole, near side, in front of the Aggie bench. Trying to get it ahead to Watt. They don't... Uh, connect, but the rebound comes out to Hill right at the halfway line. She runs around it, sends it back to Bree Alston, just inside the center circle, near side. Now wide to Macy Cole, again in front of the Aggie bench. She'll cut it inside. Tries to get the ball in to uh, hold his daughter. Picked off there by Lauren Malay, and it's going to be, let's see, throw in for Texas a and Nice play there by the Aggies. The Great. Great tackle from Addie McCain. Great timing, great technique to knock that ball off of Lauren Millay. 
And again, Lauren Millay was looking to counter. She was looking to get upfield. She was looking to turn the corner. Adam McCain threw a last minute tackle, knocked that ball off of her. Throw in comes into Piper. She'll switch it far side. Tara Zemer. Zemer. Back to Piper in the middle of the field. Right down the middle to hold his daughter. Turns, gets it on her right foot, takes another shot oh. off of the post. What a rocket from Holdestar. Again, you can see that one coming. Absolutely. She dropped down in, in between two Colorado College center midfielders. Just a pocket of space. Again, her, her, her first touch is so consistent and so reliable. It was just perfectly placed in front of her so she could open up on her second touch. Again, her hips are, are uniquely facing the sideline. She's not even square to the goal, but she was able to smoke that off the near post. And Allie Watt was coming in, and the ball broke to the right off of the post. Watt tried to cut, had to cut very sharply to try to get on the end of it and redirect it. Couldn't do it and lost her footing. But she was there trying to close on the end of the ball. Now Colorado College with it in there, attacking third down in the corner. Whistle and a foul called as uh, Jordan Hill was held from behind after making a nice defensive play. And it will be a free kick for Texas A&M. Bree Alston will put it into play quickly and does to Grace Piper right at the top of the 18 in the defending third. Piper kind of dribbles up, sends it out wide near side to Jordan Hill. 15-58 left to play. Hill across the halfway line to Smith, who will drop it back to McCain. McCain. Now to Piper. Holdest daughter. Pass a little bit behind Holdest daughter, and she couldn't make the play on it. But Colorado College will just clear it down into their attacking third. Nobody there. And uh, Cosette Morche will start the play over, get it ahead to Piper. Grace Piper for Texas A&M. Such a steady force out on the field. Gets it ahead to Cole, to McCain. Now one touch into the corner to Reagan Smith. She'll chip the ball in. Off of the inside of the post, and it bounces away. <laughs> Almost another goal for oh. Reagan Smith in Texas A&M. You kidding me. <laughs> Goodness gracious, how does that ball not go in? That is a perfectly played ball. Just the angle. And here come the Aggies again. Hold his daughter. Trying to get it out wide far side to Allie Watt. Headed back by Colorado College. Zemer picks it up. Sends it in the middle to Reagan Smith at the top of the D. Was trying to turn on it but didn't shield the defender. And uh, they got a foot on it. Here comes Colorado College. They'll dump it into their attacking half again. Kylie Suter, closest player to it, will go out of bounds, and we'll have a substitution. Checking into the lineup is going to be Abby Hubbard for the Tigers. Checking out will be Jackie Hand. And a substitution for the Aggies, Sienna Arietta will check into the lineup, and Macy Cole will check out. So it takes a, a tremendous degree of fitness to, to do what Colorado College is doing right now because they're doing a lot of defending right now. A&M yes. has, has kept the ball. So when you defend, you work. Yes. And then when you are a counter-based team, you work. So right now, they're, they're again, they're putting 10 behind the ball. They're in their middle and defensive third. And they're doing a lot of work, doing a lot of chasing, doing a lot of tackling, trying to, to break up AM's possession, only to do what? To turn around and try to expend a lot more energy on a counterattack, which is the way they're relying on. So, exactly. Uh, which is just going to, uh, with 13 minutes left, that's a long 13 minutes when you're uh, a counterattacking oriented team that's doing a lot of defending. Well, you're right. And Texas A&M has, uh, as you mentioned, has done a lot, of, uh, done a really good job of making Colorado College chase. Tonight. Yes. Yep. Switching the field, uh, playing the ball uh, from the far side to the near side and back, and then down the sideline. Yep. From outside back to outside back, or outside sure. back through Grace Piper to outside back, and and uh, you know, uh, making them chase and just stretching them out, making them run, and that eventually takes a toll. And now you have Sienna Arrieta coming in for um, for Macy Kolb, and uh, Zemer's going to find herself on the right side. Again, Sienna Arrieta, a player with a ton of energy, uh, some good technical creativity, lots of range, lots of pace. So, again, just looking to wear them down. Ball out on the far side. Allie Watt will watch it go out of bounds. It will be a throw-in. see, for Colorado College. Watt tried to get 
over there to get it, just couldn't chase it down. Colorado College will have the throw in about 15 yards off of the flag near side to our right. The Aggies will win it back at about the halfway line. Grace Piper will settle it and drop it back to Hill. We'll send the ball out near side. It's not going to make it to Zemer, and it's picked off there by Abby Hubbard. What a great Zemer, recovery. Oh, right. you're right. Zemer comes up from behind and steals it right back. McCain heads the ball to Reagan Smith, who will drop it back to Holdest daughter. She'll get it ahead to Smith, who turns, loses possession there. Goes into the back line of Colorado College. They try to send him in the attacking half. Jordan Hill is there to run it down. Ahead to Addie McKay. Cuts it in the middle of the field to Allie Watt. Turns. Runs into a defender there. Ball goes up in the air. McCain wins it. Drops it to Holdest daughter. Back to Piper. Now to Hill near side. Now in front of the Aggie bench to Tara Zemer. Back to Hill. 11.22 left to play. Hill tried to send it in the middle of the field. There was just a defender between her and Grace Piper. I don't know if she just didn't see her or what, but she hit her right in the feet. And the rebound will go all the way over. It'll go over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for Colorado College. And checking in for Colorado College will be uh, Clara Richter along with Jenna Wilt. Checking out of the lineup will be Abby Hubbard along with uh, Johanna Hamlet. So as you look out on the field, I think what we're seeing here is Colorado College starting to throw some numbers forward. Whistle and a foul call there off of the goal. Yeah, they've changed the their shape. They're in a 4-3-3 now. So they'll have two dedicated uh, wide players that will stay high which will force AM's outside mids to play a little bit more defensive. Free kick here for Colorado College. The Aggie fans are saying it needs to be about 20 yards back. I think the, our center referee just uh, lost track of where the ball was supposed to be because that was correct. Uh, should have been much further back instead of right at the halfway line. But in any event, ball ends up over the end line. It'll be a goal kick for Texas A&M. 20 shots for the Aggies, five on goal, seven shots for Colorado College, three of which are on frame. The Aggies have a 10 to two corner kick advantage. Colorado College has to send the ball out of bounds as they misplayed the ball in their back line. Addie McCain was applying pressure. It'll be a throw in for Texas A&M, top of the attacking third on the far side to our right. Sienna Arietta will take it for the Aggies. Throw in comes to McCain. Can't maintain possession there, but as it goes up the sideline, Kendall Ritchie picks it off, sends it into Bree Austin. They'll send a long diagonal ball near side. Tara Zemer gets on the end of it. Near side of the penalty area. Shielded from the ball, whistle and a foul call there on Zemer as uh, she went into the back of Kylie Suter. The Aggie fans, again, don't agree with that. But it will be a free kick for Colorado College. Near side of the penalty area. And about 10 yards off of, this, off of the end line. Taking it will be Jade Odom, the goalkeeper. 8.33 left to play in a regulation. The Aggies with a two to one advantage. Quick throw in near side as it headed out of bounds by Grace Piper. That's your job. Lauren Millett with the ball right on the sideline, ran into trouble there. Here come the Aggies again. Ball sent forward there to Allie Watt right at the halfway line. She was going to try to get it to Reagan Smith. It's cut off there. Now the ball comes, rebound comes to Watt right in the middle of the field. What Swats it through oh. to Reagan Smith, who had split two defenders. Smith still with the ball, now on the near side. Takes it down into the corner and will step on the, on the ball right in the corner and try to win either a throw in or and was trying to win a throw in or a corner. And... Uh, did neither. 
The ball was a throw in to Colorado College, but the Aggies get it right back. Now Colorado College gets it, and they try to clear it up to the middle of the field. Grace Piper's there to pick it off, and here come the Aggies one more time. Ahead, Arietta to Watt. Back to Arietta, top of the attacking third. Arietta trying to get past two defenders. Sends it away from pressure back to Kendall Ritchie. 7-12. Out wide to Watt on the far side. He's on the dribble. Sends a driven ball in. It's going to be picked up there. Scooped up by Jade Odom. Well, the ball down here in the corner to uh, Reagan Smith with seven and a half minutes. Is that when you want to be taking it to the corner? Uh, no, I think uh, I don't think you're going to be able to kill off uh, six or seven minutes in the corner by yourself. Um, but I think what happened is Allie Watt played her a brilliant ball in, right to her lead foot. She just mistouched it, and then Allie Watt kind of held her run whenever she saw Reagan miss that ball. So when Reagan did did get a, get on the end of that ball, finally get on the end of that ball, there was nobody in the box to serve the ball into. Right. So she just kind of took it upon herself to try to go kill 30 right. seconds or so. But right. yeah, a bit ambitious to try to kill the game. Yeah. At that point, it was just a, it was just the. Uh, she was a victim of, of circumstance. Yeah. I guess. The, 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 had a series of bad options there, and it was the least bad option. Right, right, right. <laughs> All right, Bree Austin, after the foul, will put the ball in play, eight yards short of the halfway line, equidistant off the near sideline. She'll send it to the far side. Arietta on the far side, battling McDonald. For Colorado College, it will go out of bounds, and we'll have a substitute. Substitution, two for Colorado College. Checking into the lineup will be Lucia Costanza, along with uh, Jackie Han. Checking out of the lineup will be Katie McDonald, along with, I believe, well, I missed it. I am not sure exactly who. Uh, I, I didn't get now, it either. I believe it's a Kylie Suter who came off the field. Throw in for Texas A&M, far side of the field. Sienna Arietta gets it, drops it back to Piper. Sends it in the middle of the field to Addie McCain. Right down the middle. Trying to get it to Reagan Smith. Just a little bit too much pace on the on the touch as Smith has split two defenders. Yeah, a really good idea from McCain there. Good timing on Reagan Smith's run. Again, a shallow run in between the gap of two Colorado College defenders. Almost got on the end of that. She would have for sure been in one-on-one. -on -one. 4.52 left to play. Colorado College with the ball in the central third. Again, Lauren Millay sends it right down the middle. Top of the 18, Jordan Hill got a head on it. Out to Piper. Back to Zemer. Zemer clears it up to the halfway line. Right there, it's going to be Kelly Sullivan who will get the ball for Colorado College. And now the Aggies get it back. Reagan Smith to Addie McCain. Ahead to Allie Watt. Watt cuts it on her left foot. Now on her right. She's going to take a shot. Cleared away there by Colorado College, but Sienna Arietta. Had it just at the top of the 18, whistling the foul call there. And I believe Arietta will get a yellow card as she kicked the ball after it lost her temper, just temporarily. And uh, Arietta gets the yellow for Texas A&M. Four oh five left to play in regulation. Again, this is a one goal game. We can't lose uh, sight of that. Even though Texas A&M was down one, then scored two. Sienna Arietta will come off the field and checking into the lineup will be Kendall Bates for Texas A&M. It'll be a free kick for Colorado College, top of their defending third, sending it right down the middle of the field as Camille Weaver. Ball comes back from Texas A&M. Weaver to Allie Watt, takes her on, blocks the shot, it goes out of bounds off of Watt. <laughs> nice job there by Holder's daughter to defend the throw in. It'll go out of bounds off of uh, Tara Zemer. But a nice hustle play. I'm 
very, very impressed. Every time, the more I see uh, Austin's Holder's daughter play, the more I think of her game. Ball sent ahead, Reagan Smith battling for it, trying to get through two defenders. Eventually wins the ball, still has it. Shot taken. Ah, she goodness. was taking on three defenders and still got a clean shot off just inside the post. Is, is this where, is this where I, uh, I use an analogy of, of her kind of looking like her daddy, trying to break through a break, break through a couple defensive tackles right there? I think that works. Again, trying to squeeze through the hole. I think that works. Grace Piper gets ahead on the ball at the top of the defending third, comes and sends it way out of bounds. Hey, listen, early in the game, I told you about Colorado College. They hosted the first uh, women's national championship for soccer. I told you the teams that were in that tournament. University of North Carolina, Harvard, Texas A&M, UCLA, Cortland State of New York, Northern Colorado, and Colorado State. Who was the winner of that tournament? I'll tell you this, Texas A&M finished fifth in that tournament. The winner was Cortland State of New York. They won that tournament. So there you go, trivia of the night. Allie Watt takes it down into the corner to kill off some time. Poked away. A nice hustle play there by Watt to come back. Almost try to win the ball back. And again, Colorado gonna, College clears it away, and it goes out of bounds across the this, halfway line. This, blow, this is a kind of yet another statistic that kind of is a little bit eye-opening. This Colorado College team, again, we've talked about their historic reputation. And you've been spitting history at us all night. They were voted 10th out of 12 teams by the coaches in the preseason, in the preseason coaches poll. And we've got the uh, Colorado College coach who gets a yellow card. That would be Jeff Bennett. Been working the officials all night long and uh, they finally had enough. Gave him a yellow. He's backed off a little bit. Again, be a free kick for Texas A&M. Sorry, Jeff. Yeah, through, uh, again, I have a hard time um, I have a hard time believing that this is a team that's going to finish in the bottom of the Mountain no, West Conference, I, especially when you have a player like Lauren Millay who's been, you know, just really impressive. Really, tonight. really impressive uh, on both sides of the ball. You, you've got a fairly reliable, you got a, a fairly reliable goalkeeper, an experienced goalkeeper, and Jade Odom. Allie Watt gets past the first defender here on the near side, chips the ball in, Odom will come up off her line to gather it in just inside the six. Go ahead. She's going to shank one on the punt, getting out. The Aggies will track it down. Hold his daughter. Top of the attacking third as we're in the final minute now. We'll send it to this side. Whistling a foul call. And I believe we're going to have a yellow card issued. And we will as the clock is stopped. And it will be issued to Madeline Stesney. His tempers get just a, just a little bit short here. Yeah, and that one, uh, that, that's that's a worthy card. Um, again. Yeah, and she, the bad she, thing about it was Watt was taking the ball down in the corner just to kill off the time, and now the Aggies have got a, a, a scoring opportunity. A scoring opportunity. Yep. You know? Absolutely. Again, she she came in from behind and late on Alstis. Really a, a dangerous tackle. Uh, could have could have injured Alstis, and with uh, less than a minute left, you don't want to see that for either team. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, a card, a, a worthy card. Kendall Ritchie, near side of the field from about 28 yards out. Gets her left foot into it and really just miss hit it. Kind of, I think she wanted to hook the ball in there and caught it a little bit on the outside of her foot. Actually put a little slice on that ball. And that's not what she wanted. Looked like you off the tee, right, Dave? Uh, I, don't, I don't hit them that well. <laughs> 30 seconds left here in the contest. Grace Piper with it. Send a long ball across the halfway line, headed back. Now the Aggies get it, send it through the circle, trying to get it to Watt. Watt got a foot on it, but couldn't control it. 10 seconds left now, and it'll be McCain who will just send it long and out of bounds, far side, and the Aggies will come away with a hard fought two to one victory over the Colorado College Tigers. Goals tonight, 
it was Colorado College who got on the board first with 35.09 left in the second half. It was Jackie Hand who hit the back of the net for Colorado College. That's her first goal of the season. Austin Hall, daughter, about three and a half minutes.